Hey gang, Jack Lair here. Uh, sit down and get comfy, because this is going to be a long one. Uh, I just played through all of the Mass Effect games, and I want to talk about them. So this is probably going to take a while. I'm going to be talking spoilers, all kinds of crap, so please bear with me. If you don't want to watch, if you don't want to hear spoilers, go watch something else. But this one's going to pretty much give my opinion from the beginning of the series all the way up until the end. Now I'm going to start with where and when I played the games. Now Mass Effect came out and I really didn't pay much attention to it because it was a sci-fi shooter. I played a little bit of it on I think the Xbox 360 and I just kind of eh, really didn't care for it. Didn't get into it. The beginning started a little slow for me got on the Citadel, scanned a bunch of keepers, got sick of it, stopped playing. I didn't pick it up again until Mass Effect 2 and people started telling me stories about what happened in their Mass Effect game and what happened here and what happened there and that's when I was like, wait, this sounds good, this isn't the game that I played, this game I played was boring. So, it was on a Steam sale uh, so I went back and played it on PC. Played Mass Effect. And I let the cards just let them fall where they may. And it was an amazing game. I got through the, the first initial mission where, um, you know, we're tracking down Saren. We don't know that we're tracking down Saren. We're just responding to some geth. And... I love the fact that in the first Mass Effect, you don't know what Geth are. You don't know. You don't know what the spikes are. You don't know what the husks are. You have no clue what's going on. And that's a beautiful thing in a game. Because most of the time you're like, ah, oh, he's wearing a Nazi uniform. Or, ah, he is a zombie. I know exactly what to do. This was a lot more, what the hell is this? And I loved it for it. And then they started to introduce, they introduced uh, Caden. Don't care. I, I really hate that whoever, because whoever voice acted him did a really good job, but whoever wrote his character, I just didn't care. Now, I didn't really like Ashley much more than him, because Ashley seemed a very pessimistic person, which I'm fundamentally an optimist, so we didn't really get along. So the, the first playthrough of Mass Effect, uh... I kept Rex alive, because I loved Rex. I loved that Rex was no nonsense, you know, who who do I put a bullet in? And he reminded me of uh, B.A. Baracus, Mr. T, from the A-Team. And it was just the little hints of awesome that were in there, to where I was like, I like this guy. This guy is no nonsense, he just... Point, who do I kill? Got it. Garrus. I didn't really understand Garrus' character, but Garrus is my boy. So he and I palled around with Third Wheel, whoever was with us, until um, we ended. I ended up figuring out that different powers did different things and I could give different people uh, sniper rifles and whatever. So we got all the way through uh, Mass Effect 1, and I saved the council because I thought, eh, we probably need these guys around, and I still hated, what's his name, Adema or whatever. I've forgotten most of their names, so bear with me. So the first Mass Effect game, finish it, roll right into Mass Effect 2. I mean, I literally credits rolled on Mass Effect 1, went, popped out, went to the store, downloaded Mass Effect 2, started playing it. In my first playthrough, uh, also I romanced Liara the first time through Mass Effect 1, uh, just because I really couldn't take Ashley after a while, and just didn't seem... she didn't seem compatible with my Shepard. Got all the way through, and went into Mass Effect 2. Mass Effect 2, started hanging out, love 
all of the characters in Mass Effect 2. I, Grunt was just hysterical. Loved him. Uh, Morden. Morden. Morden was my friend. I loved hanging out with him. Jacob, eh. Miranda, eh. Jack, cool character. Way too damaged of a chick for me to get invested in. And Tally just stole my heart. And ended up romancing her. Uh, went through, uh, picked up Legion, and Legion became Legion became my other boy. So whenever there was a, a mission that seemed a little more lethal, and didn't seem to have a lot of dialogue, didn't take us back to the Citadel, anything like that. It was me, Garrus, and Legion palling around. Now, of course, the whole crew had been taken by that point, so we really didn't have much time to pal around. But the, the beauty that Mass Effect 2 harnessed, where Mass Effect 1 was kind of missing. One, okay, let me take a step back. Mass Effect 1. Eh, I'll get to that. Sorry, I'm going to go back and forth between the games after I go through this first playthrough, because then I played it again. Mass Effect 2 got all the way through all the playthroughs, figured out who to send where, just by what made sense, uh, had uh, Legion go in the, the vents, because, you know, he's... he's Legion. And then... got all the way through to the end, managed to get everybody to live, and defeated the giant Terminator thing. Blew up the Collector's base, and at the end of Mass Effect 2, I was kind of ambivalent to the elusive man, really didn't care. I was eh, whatever. And then waited for Mass Effect 3 to show up. Mass Effect 3 showed up, and there were... I mean, it starts off, boom, off and running. And you're just going and going and going. And it, it's beautiful. But in between then, Mass Effect 3 came out and everybody was like, oh, blah, 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 ending, blah, 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 blah. I was like, what? And I watched the endings on YouTube and I'm still like, what? I don't get it. What's, I mean, I don't, I don't understand what's going on. And I thought, well, maybe there's something that, in the game, will lead up to that ending. So I decided not to play it for a while. So I didn't play it until mm, about a week ago. So I played it in towards the end of November. And uh, bought it on sale for the, for the PS3, uh, because I didn't want to buy it through Origin. And... Popped it in, I was like, yes, let's play. And then it's like, choose what happened. And I'm like, great, this happened, and I did this, and this. And it's like, great, let's start Mass Effect. And it's like, oh, by the way, you let the council die, uh, you shot uh, so-and-so, you uh, killed the Rachni Queen. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. No, back the truck up. I didn't do any of those things. I set the Rachni Queen loose. Payoff on that is utter shit, by the way. Complete and total shit. Anyways, I'll get back to that. So, since then, my computer had died. I had uh, uh, purchased a whole new computer by then and had to go back and play through Mass Effect 1 and 2. Now, I could have played with saves and blah, 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 but I decided not to. Decided just to throw it on easy, fly through it. Which Mass Effect 1, uneasy, is real sweet. And Scanning the Keepers is about the most annoying mission in that game. Went through, played through Mass Effect 1, and decided I wanted to see what the Ashley romance was like. Okay. One, sidestep here. Any woman who keeps her hair in a bun while having... Freaky sex with her commander? Way uptight. Like, the librarian thing works for a while until you get the bun and just, yeah, whatever. But I did like the fact that her story actually evolved and kind of went on. Still killed Caden. Still didn't kill Rex. 
still released the Rack Nine Queen, and just kept going. Then moved from there on to Mass Effect 2. I don't remember a lot of the things that happened. Mass Effect 2, I have to give credit, I do love that every time you go, skipping ahead to Mass Effect 2, that every time you go up and talk to Joker, like, what do you think about the people we took out of the last mission? And Garrus, the line for Garrus is priceless. It's like, oh, it looks like Garrus finally worked that stick out of his ass, but now he's trying to beat people to death with it. And God, it's just so perfect of a line. Because it, it just works that way. And, and Garrus is that character, and you just kind of look, like, look at him, and you're like, well, yeah, he kind of is that way. And it was just amazing. Now, going back to Mass Effect 1, like I said, brand new rig. Uh, one of the nice, uh, they're not called IMAX anymore, but or are they still called, I don't know, whatever. The giant desktops. That's what I got. So I'm playing Mass Effect 1, and load times are just... But... The elevators on the Citadel are scheduled for a certain length of time. And they are painful. Painful! I wish they would go back and just like tweak that little part of that game to make the elevators not so painful. But I knew what I was getting in for, so went ahead and got through that. Moving into Mass Effect 2. Wanted to try a different romance option. Couldn't do it just could not do it. I was like, wouldn't be all romance Jack this time, because Jack's an option, and just, I couldn't do it. And I uh, kept around uh, Samara once again, and loved Samara. I don't understand why she shows off that much cleavage. It's just kind of creepy, I guess. It's like the, the Amazon queen that, I don't know, because she's, it's like if her, her, okay, this is, this is what I think of her. If you give Robocop boobs, you get Samara. That's kind of the level of where I'm like, ah, you're kind of creepy lady. But helped her out, did the little mission, did Jacobs, blah, blah, blah. Did Miranda's, eh, I don't care. And did a bunch of probing and blah, 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 blah. And didn't do a lot of the side missions this time because I really didn't care. I still followed the same basic premise because my Shepard, here's, here's how I play Shepard. Shepard is trying to do the right thing. He will try to be nice. He is generally a nice guy. But the second you screw with him... He will turn your head inside out, which is what I did. So every time someone was giving me shit, a little renegade option popped up, click, and bad things happened. People got pushed out windows. Uh, I believe I blew some people up and generally just snapped at anybody who really started, tried to start shit. So basically played the same game, but this time I lost Morden which was kind of heart-wrenching, because I was like, oh, he's dead. But, let the cards fall where they may. Moved on to Mass Effect 3, because I downloaded it on PC so that I could actually play it with my save continuing, because I found out there's no way to import at all into the PS3 without taking the, the, the Mass Effect 3 box back and then buying the trilogy, and I was just like, eh, screw it. So I got all the way through to Mass Effect 3. And Mass Effect 3 starts out with the Reapers landing on Earth. And you're just like, well, we're screwed. And I do have to hand it to him. Whoever's on the sound design team, you are awesome. Awesome. And the Reaper noises are amazing. The little and their laser beams that just and it just tears stuff apart. Pardon me. I need a drink. So we're going through and we're getting the gang back together. 
Uh, I also played uh, all of this without DLC, because I just wanted to see what the exact game would look like if, you know, someone finds the game in, you know, 20 years from now and they're, they can't download the DLC. So I wanted to play it just straight. So I didn't play multiplayer, didn't do anything like that. Uh, love all of the voice actors, and it was it was weird, but towards the end of Mass Effect 3, when they finally put a face with a name for uh, Admiral Hackett, or General Hackett? Commander Hackett. Admiral? Whatever. Whichever he was. Hackett. And, of course, then I realized that I'm like, oh, wait! Wait! He's a synthetic. He's going to turn against us. And I'm like, no, wait. He's a star of a TV show. No, wait. And then, you know, it eventually wore off to where I no longer saw the actor behind the character, and he actually became a character. Because there was enough dialogue to develop him. And once again, got Garrus back. Awesome. Rolling with the homeboy. Picked up, you know, you pick up Tally, you pick up uh, Ashley or Ash. That's a weird nickname. Who's it? Oh, yeah. Hey, Ash. No. No. You don't give someone a nickname that is the that is burnt things laying in the bottom of a chimney. That doesn't make any sense. I mean, I know it's part of her name, but... Eh. But she did quote uh, literature, which I was fairly impressed that they kept up that character through all three games. That she did quote more, more literature, more lines, and I really love her story where she's, you know, she's trying to support her sister, and her sister, she's they're doing a memorial for the for the rest of the family and they're just it, it's just a really good feeling and then we get and I forget this guy's name and you guys are going to kill me for it let me go ahead and edit this out I'll look it up actually pff, edit it whatever I'll just look it up while I'm talking so because Morden died I got uh, the replacement the replacement guy on in Mass Effect 3, the replacement doctor. Paddock Wicks, that's his name. So Paddock Wicks has the greatest non-line in the game to where he, 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 does, he does a part, and I'll put a link uh, here and you can go watch the scene and it's just hysterical to where the point I was laughing so hard that I missed like the next 30 seconds of dialogue had to essentially uh, go <laughs> stop the game reload a previous save and then listen to the rest of the dialogue and then after that like if you if you go if you've watched that scene now there's the first half of the scene is hysterical, and then after, like, you you should be done laughing, there's another punch at the end, which made me laugh again, and I missed more dialogue, so I had to restart it and watch it again. And it was one of those things that it gets it gets all the way to the end, and it's, uh, it's great, and I, I know that there are alternate things where if Morden's still alive, he does different things. He sings again, uh, which is always a good thing. Uh, and... He gets, he's just making, he's cracking wise and trying to be a little, he's got a little more levity than Morden, to where Morden was always a little, uh, I don't know what that is, but that's what he reminded me of. And then, and then the bastard goes and dies. I mean, he, he sacrifices himself, which the first time, first time, since probably the end of Twilight Princess that I cried because I was I was sad I was sad I was laughing with this guy we were 
we were palling around, we were being cool, and and then there's I mean there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do. He goes he goes up the thing, dies, cures the genophage, and that's it. And you're just well, shit. And the whole the whole the whole the whole game, whole Mass Effect 3, dark. Shit is fucked up. And there's nothing you can do in the beginning of the game. Because you're just like, well, shit. The Terrans are getting messed up. The, the, it's already getting messed up. The Bothan? Bah. The guys with four eyes. Gone. I mean, their whole homeworld is gone. Apparently that was in the DLC part that, you know, I didn't, I didn't play. And... You're just you're just left there going, huh? Eh. Edie gets a body, which is cool. Edie takes over Eva, which really I, I mean I understand why they did it because it comes there. There are some good plot points later. There are some good plot hooks, and it really helps fill out the. It fills out a lot of the plot twists that are between humans and synthetics. Because Evie is... Edie. Excuse me. Edie. Is a synthetic. Edie is a synthetic, and she... She's an AI that eventually gets a body, and now she's got the body, and you... Of course, weird Barbie doll body, but whatever. And Joker has formed an attachment to her. And it's kind of cool because you get to watch their their romance or weird attempt at one uh start along the way so you get you get him and he's he's just kind of cool and he goes through the change and then he becomes a man no but uh he the the, the dialogue between him and shepherd is really good and the Joker Shepherd dialogue has always been fantastic, and this is mwah, fantastic. Very, very lovable. I love Joker. I would love to see Joker get his own. I would love to see Joker get his own uh, video game, or just an animated movie. Go! Oh, oh, there you go. Holy crap! There. There, there's your free idea. There's your free idea. Give me, give me Joker going through flight school as a movie. There, my gift to you. You sell me that. I will buy that. I will eat that up. Don't give me another game. At least not after Mass Effect 3, because who knows which of the three things I chose. But give me, give me that. Give me Joker going through training and with the with the brittle bone syndrome and just showing that he's a badass pilot and just give me that show me that story that would be awesome another character that i haven't mentioned is james james is one of the newer characters and he is uh voiced by freddie prince jr uh and he does an amazing job <laughs> But it's kind of a disconnect when you when you first know that it's Freddie Prince Jr. because he's or Freddie Prince, no Freddie, whatever. God, I need to edit all that out if I get a chance. But so he's he's voiced by someone who is not does not look like him, but he pulls it off, and it's very cool to see to see the development between Shepard and him in because it's in the same position where it was in the first few Mass Effects where Anderson was to Shepard and he's got the ability to say look here I you know here's what here's what you can do you can be a better man you can get through this you can you know you don't have to live in the past because James apparently has a lot a similar backstory at least to my Shepard as being the lone survivor of a coups and it's just it's it's really nice that 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 it has come full circle to where Shepard is Shepard is now the master. You know. 
I, I, I brought him out just whenever I could. And it's, it's fun walking around with different characters to get different incidental dialogues. Throughout the whole game, you can do this. And the great thing is, is that uh, during the elevator scenes, if you bring different characters, they talk to each other in the elevators. In Mass Effect 2, there's a scene where if you're walking around the Citadel with uh, Garrus and Tally, <laughs> he will say, Ah, it's just like old times on the Citadels, remember? The elevators. And she's like, yeah. And it's like, ah, you can t tell me again how your suit protects you. She's like, I will hurt you. Oh, come on, just for old times' sake? She's like, I have a shotgun. All right, then. It's just dialogue like that that is beautiful and makes these characters flesh out because they've got little banter back and forth just like us as human beings do. And it's the writing that really... I mean, it's an awesome game. Game. But it's also... A fantastic script and writing, and I and you get attached to these people. Anyways, so we're going through the different the different missions, and it gets to one of the points where the elusive man is essentially doing different things, and it gets to the point. I think it was the the sanctuary, and. It went from, wow, that guy's, that guy's an annoying prick, to, I want to put a bullet in that motherfucker's head. Uh, just, please, please let me shoot him in the head before this game is done. Because if you don't know, every once in a while, you know, bad guys in games, oh, they escape. Or, oh, we can't find them. Oh, the thing blew up. Or, you know. But no, I wanted to put a bullet in that man's head. Back to where I was. So, at, at a certain point, uh, you get to go to uh, kind of the, the the fight between the Quarians and the Geth has come to a head. And you're uh, helping take down part of the Geth, and you find out that one of the things that they're doing is they're using Legion, who was my boy from Mass Effect 2, as essentially a transmitter, transmitting this new Reaper code which will allow them to actually become individuals, possibly. Which is a great story hook, and at the end of it, you've got to choose whether you want to side with the Geth or the Quarians. Now, I've heard, heard, that there are actually, if you have enough Paragon, uh, points that you can actually broker peace between the two of them. I did not have enough, or I didn't do something right, or whatever, but let the cards fall where they may. And I had a choice between siding with Legion, who's my boy, and Tally, who's my girl. Siding with my girl. I know bros before hoes, but... And it gets to the point and this is the second time I cried in this game, is that Legion essentially attacks you. And Tally kills him. Tally kills him. And then at the and then as as Legion is dying, and once again a testament to the writing, I'm getting a little choked up just thinking about this line, is that he asks Tally the question that started the whole war is that he asks does this unit have a soul and tally says yes and then he dies and the screwed up part is that as hard as this is as crappy as shepherd feels he gets back there and everyone, everyone on the ship gives him shit for it. One of your best friends, your, let's say, okay, for those who have girlfriends, wives, significant others, whatever, let's say your best friend and your significant other 
you have to choose between the two. And your best friend attacks you, and your significant other has to kill them. Do you think your friends are going to give you crap, or are they going to be like, Dude, man, that sucks. I, I, I'm sorry. There's nothing I can say. And everybody gives him crap. Everybody. They introduce a new bad guy, uh, Kai Lang, who is a complete and utter jackass. He was another one that I couldn't wait to put a bullet in. And I don't remember if I got to or not. I think I did. Yeah, it was, it was a rent one again, a renegade option. I don't understand why it was a renegade option, but whatever. But yeah, so he he's he's just a complete jerk, and he is the he's he's a ninja, even though he's not. Oh, I I don't know if I got told you guys the first time that I cried in this game, and that was when. Kai Lang, the whole reason I hate that, the reason I hate him, is because he kills Thane. Thane, another one of my crew, who was already dying, so... Alright. But once again, once again, with his dying breath, he and his son say a prayer of forgiveness for my shepherd, for me. And it just, you just, and he's like, why did he, you know, why was he, why was he praying? I thought he was already atoned for us. And he's like, oh, the prayer was for you. And you're just like, oh, I feel like shit. So, okay. We know that I'm a horrible wussy guy and I cry at video games. Deal with it. You've watched my channel long enough to you know that my emotions are all over the place, which makes me an energetic kind of guy, but these people I had been running with for, or these people, these imaginary characters, and don't worry, I cry at movies and books too when characters that I've been following for a long time die. Uh, you know, I probably would have uh, shed a tear had Han Solo gotten killed in the Empire, and that's what it's like! God damn it! It's like, alright! Imagine you're in Empire Strikes Back. Er, no, not Empire Strikes Back. Return of the Jedi. You're in Return of the Jedi. And... For some reason... Leia kills Chewie. Yeah, that would be real screwed up, right? I think so, too. And that's why there was... I mean, it was, it was anger, and it was... Oh, it's... So we get to the whole the whole plot of the game is that you're getting people together to make a final push to Earth, and you're building this thing called the conduit, or no, the crucible, the crucible. You need the conduit to power the crucible, or something. And ter turns out that's the citadel. But and you're going through, and you're going through, and you're 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 getting every, you're getting this massive fleet together, and you're like, okay. Here's what we've got to do. We've got to get the Reapers off Earth, and then we're going to go... We're just going to keep kicking their butts everywhere. We're going to fly around with this giant fleet and destroy the Reapers. And we've got the the Crucible that we're going to... Apparently it's a weapon that's been passed down from, from cycle and cycle and cycle. And we're finally going to destroy the Reapers. And... You get to the end, and you give... You give a speech that would make Patton proud. And you're just like, I know that, you know, we've 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 fought here, we've bled, we've lost comrades, but we're here and we're gonna finally end it. And it's just like, yeah, alright. And then nothing goes right. Nothing. The, your reinforcements don't show up, the missiles don't work, just 
everything goes completely and utterly wrong. And you end up in one of the most tense moments of the game where the, everything is getting thrown at you. By the way, the things that I'll call Banshees, which are Asari taken over by Reapers, you'll understand if you play. If you've already played the game, you know what I'm talking about. I'll, I'll take Brutes. I'll take the weird... Uh, the, not the, what are they called? What's Garrus called? Whatever, I forgot. Uh, Turians! There we go. Got a brain cell or two left up there. So the Turians get taken over by Gath, the Asari get taken over by Gath, and the Asaris are just insane. Insane. And you find you find the Rachni I mean, back up. Sorry, completely stream of conscious here. But you back up and um, you find that the Rachni are back, but they're being taken over by the Reapers. Lo and behold, blah, 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 you find the Rachni Queen, who you free. Who the Rachni, the most dangerous things in the universe before the Reapers, who the, they had to fight the, the Krogans are the only things that could finally destroy them, and you free the Queen, and what does she do? She sends engineers. She sends engineers to go help build the... the the crucible thingy. I'm sorry, you nearly took over the galaxy and you're giving me engineers while your twisted offspring from the Reapers are shooting rockets and stuff at me that it takes me a long time to try and kill one of those, ducking behind cover the whole time? A, a little more help, maybe? I do like the the line about, eh, now all we need is a gun that shoots giant thresher moss. That was classic. It's a throwaway line, and if you're not paying attention, you'll completely miss it, but it's awesome. Anyways, back to everything going wrong. So you're racing to this beam. That's all we gotta do. All we gotta do is get there, push a few buttons, and make everything work. And... You get all the way to there, and you have to shoot them. Shoot one missile. It goes wild, and it doesn't work. And you then have to get the second one, but you have to wait for it to arm. And there are crap loads of bad guys just swarming all over you. And there, I was just like shooting left and right, trying to take them down, trying to keep everybody alive, going back and forth, jumping over things, jumping back over things, brutes. The, the weird Turian guys, the Asari, the big Banshees that I call them. All hell's breaking loose. And finally it's like, oh, the missile system's ready. Run over, just dash over, screw everything, shields are gone. Slam on the button. The Reaper gets blown to hell. And it's like, okay, great. Now all we got to do is get in the beam. And you're running for the beam, and it's doing the slow-mo thing. And you're like, okay... Or no, it's not doing it yet. Maybe it was. I don't remember. But it was in my mind. It was like, oh, we just gotta make it there. And the Reapers are just like shooting beams, and people are getting picked off left and right. And you're kind of like dodging back and forth between the beam, and then you get hit with it and black. And you're just like, fuck, I screwed up. The galaxy is just gone. There's nothing I can do. And then. Lo and behold, Shepard gets up. He is burned. He is, the, like, the whole side of his armor has gone, and this arm is all charred. And he's, like, limping up there. He picks up a gun, and he just, like, puts bullets in things' head in slow motion, and then he falls in the beam. You end up on the Citadel, because that's where you were trying to get to. And there's a scene, then you run into, and you're kind of talking through this, and it's doing some plot, and it's really kind of cool, but blah, 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 blah. You get all the way in, and then Anderson's there too, and the elusive man shows up. And the elusive man is using his control thing that he learned earlier to control Anderson. 
and to control you, weirdly enough. And he tries to make you shoot Anderson, which I'm unclear whether you actually did or if you just shot at him. And you basically talk back and forth with the elusive man, and eventually you put a bullet in him. You activate the crucible, and you sit down, and you're sitting there and you're talking with Anderson, your mentor, and then he dies, and Shepard's head just kind of slumps over. And that's where I think, in my heart of hearts, they should have just faded to black. It, Imagine that, because that leaves that leaves that leaves it open to all kinds of crazy things. Like you know, did Shepard really die? Well, he died once. Maybe they can bring him back again. You know, did did it work? Did you know, just lost, just Sopranos that shit. Just black done. Credits. What? 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 What happened? You would have people just. Rampaging for you to make more games. But that's not what happened. Hackett gets on the radio and says, Oh, it's not doing anything. It's broken. So Shepard, who has been shot, most of his friends he's just watched get blown away, and he tries to stumble forward to push a button or something on the console, and he passes out and he goes up in an elevator. And he stands up, and this little holographic white kid comes out. Uh, white as in, like, the color, not... Anyways. But he comes out, and he says, uh, Cycle must continue. You've changed something, blah, 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 blah. And he presents you with three options. One is, you can go over and shoot the thingy, like Anderson would have done, and it shows Anderson doing it, and destroys the Reapers. The other is, you can go over to the other thing and control the Reapers, which is what the Elusive Man wanted to do. And the third option is Synergy. To where you can jump in the beam and make yourself one with the Citadel, and then Synthetics and Organics will get along. I blew him up! They ruined my planet! They killed all my friends! Fuck them! They're dead! Don't care if I die. Don't care. Watch the credits. At the end, little kid told, asked Grandpa for another tale of the shepherd. So now I'm on YouTube. Just decided. I'll watch the other ending and see what happens. And... The, and I watched the extended endings, so b bear with me, because I didn't get... So, the control one, eh, whatever. The synthetic one. What a bunch of hippie bullshit! It's like, oh, we're synthetics. You're in me, and I'm in you, and we're all the same. Yeah, that's great. That's great. The, the giant reapers that were about to eat us... Suddenly everybody uh, has green eyes and thinks happy thoughts. What? No! Yeah, I, do, I, I know where you were going with it. I know where you were going with it. But one man throwing himself into a beam of light, well, okay, with the exception of Tron, does not save the universe. And even then they were just saving a computer. You know, now that I think about it, what the hell was the point of Tron? I mean, we overthrew the master control program. We did. We we turned off a computer. I don't know. I I, I digress. But you jump into a beam of light, and everybody's eyes turn green. But the, th the thing is that. All three of those endings, you die. There's no, there's no way that Shepard lives. 
the the little the little house that Tally was gonna build. Never gonna see it. You just Shepard's dead. And I know there's no way that they could have ended that well. There is no way that Shepard could have lived at the end of that at the end of those games. There is, but it would have been less of a punch. But the ending of that, the introduction of the Citadel is the home of the weird little holographic kid, just... Eh? I mean, don't get me wrong, I don't hate the ending. The ending the ending's fine. It's just that after I just had one of the most stressful moments of, of my game playing career, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm fighting off all these crazy things to push the button, and I push the button, and then we're running for the beam, and everybody's getting wiped out, and I get blasted, and then I'm, like, crawling along, and I'm crawling through caverns filled with bodies, and... It's just kind of... Eh. It didn't, it didn't, it didn't... It didn't finish off what I wanted. I wanted a, a, that's what I wanted. And I got kind of a, oh, here you go. I don't know. I do know one thing. Is that the Mass Effect trilogy is going to become... A yearly event for me and it's gonna be one of those things that I'm just gonna play it every year and I am I am Garrus Vicarian and this is my favorite spot on the Citadel I love that they made a joke about themselves that gamers made about the second game awesome I let him win by the way for those of you who he's my boy He's only a Turian. I mean, I gotta give, I gotta give him something. He took a missile for me to the face. To the face. Anyway. But that's my thoughts on Mass Effect. I would love to see. Okay, some other game ideas. I'll throw these out there. One. Okay, guys, take a cue from Firaxis. You know what? Go talk to Firaxis. Give me, give me an XCOM set in the Turian War. Done. Sold. Sold. Give me, give me XCOM style, run, hide, shoot. You know, we're going to invade this place, stretch the maps out a little bit. You know, follow, follow Halo. Give me, give me Max Effect Wars. Give me some fun ship-to-ship -ship combat and some on-the-ground combat, and we'll call it a day. Uh, I do... <laughs> Somebody made a joke, and I can't remember who, but, uh... uh make the next game the, uh... Uh... The Asari Sims, where Liara goes back to... Uh, the Asari planet and is, uh, rebuilding, and turned it into kind of like a building game. Where you have to rebuild the planet. I thought that was hysterical, and I kind of like it. And I, I don't know. It'll never happen, but it's one of those games where I was like, you know what? I'd play that. I would play that. Just rebuilding the world, rebuilding the world. Still mad that Legion died. Just hated. I hated that part. I hated it. And then to find out that there might have been something I could do. But that's another beauty of the Mass Effect thing, is that it made me it, it made it made me as a player think how Shepard would have been thinking. To where after that happened, I bet you in my version of Shepard, Shepard is thinking, what did I do wrong? What could I have done? How did I screw that up? I don't know. 
Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, extremely long video, and I just needed to get it off my chest, and most of you have probably turned it off way before now. Uh, I know I got a bunch, bunch of things wrong, and I left things out, but this was a great game. The, these three games were amazing. Amazing games. And I really think that they're going to... I, I just watched the VGAs and... By the way... By the way, VGAs, thank you for spoiling The Walking Dead in the first five minutes! Schmucks. I hate you guys for that. And now, introducing the surviving cast of The Walking Dead. Wow, thank you for letting me know that every other character dies, pricks. Anyways, but, uh, I'll try and calm down now. Christmas is coming, uh, so I am on, uh, game-buying hiatus. So we may be digging into my, uh, kind of pile of shame around here. And taking a look at some other games. Uh, I've got a big spindle of DVDs, so we can go ahead and play some. I'm uh, probably going to take a look at some of the games that I, I myself have not played, because that's always fun, and do a review of. But yeah. Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3. All great games. And, as always, play on.